Hi, this is a continuation for Power Electrons lectures, and in the previous lecture, we have discussed the thermal consideration when we have a switch and start dissipating some uh, power as heat and the temperature for the junction starts rising up. And we designing a, a, a heat a sink and cooling system just to make sure that the junction temperature doesn't exceed the maximum limit. So today we are going just to validate the concept again, but using LT spice. So we will build the same model and also another electric circuit just to see if the junction temperature is estimated uh, uh, accurately and also to see what LT spice offers to insert a heatsink in the simulation and also to calculate the uh, junction temperature after the insertion of that heatsink. So let's go to one of the examples. Okay, so we are in LT Spice and we have this circuit here, which we have um, a supply 100 volt and the load 5 ohm, and we have this transistor. And I will tell you why I choose in this transistor later on. So that transistor will uh, take the uh, signal to control that current from this source, and we have some, some voltage here and current. I didn't choose to make it pulsating source because pulsating source will make it a little bit complicated and also the simulation will be a little bit longer so that's why i will consider the simple example to validate our model okay so once we have the supply uh, supply some current and voltage sorry to the to the gate here for this mosfet the mosfet will turn on and if it's saturated so it will uh, it will have some voltage drop here across it and that voltage drop will be very minimal. And in, if, if it's multiplied by the uh, current, it will dissipate power, okay? The power dissipated by the MOSFET, is, it will be calculated by LT-SPICE, and also it will add to the power dissipated by the uh, voltage and current at the drain, it will add also the power dissipation at the gate as well, and all that will be shown as a power dissipation. So that will be translated to heat, and we learned from the last lecture that uh, that a power dissipation can be represented by a current source. So that's why I have the current source here. The current source value has the same value of the power dissipation. That's why the equation here is taken from LT spice once we calculated the power dissipation by LT spice. So I will show you now the equation there, and just I covered it here. So the current has the same power dissipation value. And also we have some resistances here, which are the thermal resistances, which should be given from uh, or obtained from the uh, data sheet. And we have in parallel here another extra one, which represents the heat sink. I disconnected now just to make sure that we validate the model before heat sink and then after the heat sink. Okay. And this is a voltage source representing the ambient. So that model is the model that we have for our system. Why I have chosen this MOSFET and not other MOSFETs? Because LT Spice offers for us some MOSFETs with thermal properties. So not any MOSFET in the LT Spice, not all MOSFETs can provide the data, but they in, in practical, yes, they, they heat up and everything uh, will be calculated based on the participation, but here, you can see the junction temperature uh, calculated by LT spice by choosing some MOSFETs. The, the, the spice model is, is prepared for that. So how I pick up a MOSFET that has thermal uh, model so I can really get the measurement of the junction temperature by right click on the MOSFET and go to pick a new MOSFET. You will find this list here, but all of them look similar. So how I pick up one of them. Just extend this a little bit, okay? And you'll find each MOSFET has some data which is common with other MOSFETs, okay? But when you go down a little bit, you will find some MOSFETs that has extra data here, okay? So the data here is, is more than the others, okay? That means it has the thermal uh, model and thermal data and thermal uh, information for that MOSFET already fit to that model to provide for all the, chun the junction and maybe you will find something called R theta junction to ambient and there are many other things uh, representing the thermal model 
The third model model here is is represented by capacitors and and resistors, okay, which we don't care about in this uh, in this uh, module. We just care about the CDC, so we want just one resistor. And if you go down, 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 you'll find some other MOSFETs here that provide this one. So you can choose one of these in your model here, and that will provide you the measurement of the junction. So in my circuit, I have chosen this one. That one in the model, uh, the, the, uh, the thermal resistance sometimes different from the data sheet. So for this MOSFET here, we have, which is this one, we have the data for the um, R junction to ambient. It says here it's about 62, okay, if there is minimal footprint, and 40 if it has some cooling area of 6 centimeters square. I want to consider the 62 for this simulation because I'm not sure about the cooling area. Okay, so I will not consider this one, which is smaller. Okay, so I will consider the bigger one here. And how I tell the uh, MOSFET that I will consider the 62 is by writing it to the model here. Okay, so just right click on the name and you can add R theta junction to ambient 62 and T ambient as 25. If you have different MOSFET with different uh, junction to ambient, you can really uh, uh, alter that, okay? Why I added t temperature of the ambient 25? Because some other data sheets or uh, uh, or consideration with the model itself in Antispice to, uh, to consider uh, T ambient as 85, not a 25, okay? So I just make sure that these considerations are taken in the model of that MOSFET. And now to tell the uh, Altispice that I want to see the junction temperature, you have to add here one option, okay? So right click on this one, okay? And we have to add the options here, which is dot options SOA accounting equal one. That means I'm turning on the SOA accounting for MOSFET that includes thermal data, okay? And also I add temperature ambient for the model is it 25 degree, which is coincides with this one, okay? This is for the electric one, but what about the thermal model that we developed before? So we have that one. We already have the equation for the power dissipation. That one is from the data sheet. It's not exactly one, it's 0.7, but I just make approximation as one. And that one is 62. So the ambient, the, uh, the junction to ambient is 62. So I divided that to 61 here and one there, all right? And this is 25. So I think we can now run the simulation. We measure the junction temperature here and we measure the junction temperature here and see how close they are to each other. So let's now run the simulation. But again, I have to tell you about something. So for the simulation, if you are using pulsating one, it will take long time. That's why I choose a steady state one or a steady uh, value for this one. I choose in the transient to be 200 second. Why? Because I want to see uh, the steady state, not the transient, okay? And I can select this value to be about uh, about 100 or, 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 or 190 if I want to see just the final value, but I will leave it just to show you the, the final, the, the transient. I have chosen the maximum time step as one that will speed up the simulation, okay? Okay, now let's run the simulation again. And let's see that simulation has finished because all that set to be very fast simulation. Now I want to see the junction temperature calculated by the thermal data. Okay, I don't have here a prop for that, but you can go to the uh, plot here and add traces and you will find something called T junction M1. M1 means MOSFET here, okay, and T junction means the junction for that one. Okay, I will select it and show it. And this is what is shown. The temperature for this MOSFET start at 25 and start rising until it reaches about, let's see here, about 94 degree. Okay, now I want to see how much uh, the, the temperature from my model. Okay, again, that same power dissipation equation i will show it to you just alt and press here i took in this one okay and just copy it here okay that's it okay what's that junction temperature click here and you will see a good agreement 
because we have here uh, from uh, about I think this one is about 93.4 and that one is about uh, the city state 94 so we have very good agreement between our model and also the calculated one by LT spice and you can also uh, get the the case temperature right click on this add the trace and you'll find TC for the M1 add it okay and also from your plot here add it okay and I think we can just zoom out <coughs> or zoom in okay and you'll find here the junction and junction these two are junctions and these two are ambient so let's see this one this one at the city state is about 92 and this one the TC by the MOSFET is about 93 which is also very close to each other so now we have validated our model but what if I want to add a heat sink and I also want to validate that so I can just make this resistor here which has some value as a uh, thermal resistance uh, for the heat sink and just connect it here okay so what is the temperature of the junction with the addition of that heat sink okay so now let's do the calculation again and let's just draw the junction temperature for our model and our model telling us that it will be about 42 0.7 degree this is the temperature jun a junction temperature for our model with the existence of the heat sink but what about this how I add heat sink for this one and validate my answer the answer for that is to go to the component and select something called S O A therm heat sink this component here and add it to your model like that and this one will work as a heat sink for our MOSFET but we have to tell that heat sink that you are connected to our MOSFET by looking at the input for that heat sink it says I want the TC the case temperature so from where we can get the temperature uh, of the case I think we can we have seen how we can access that temperature of the case by going to the plot at trace and we can look at that one so this one is the name of the signal for the temperature of the case of that MOSFET I can just create a label here and put that name like that and then connect it so I'm connecting this one to my uh, heatsink now my heatsink I will also uh, uh, manipulate the data here just to make sure that I have the same as this one so this one says the thermal temperature is about 20 so I will alter that to 20 and the consideration for the ambient is 25 so I will make it like this one okay now I think everything is done and I don't need to do any more addition now let's try to run the simulation again so my junction temperature from my model is about 42.7 and from my add trace from my MOSFET which is T junction now uh, okay it takes long time okay and finally we have a bit of a steady state here I can increase this to about 500 just to make sure it reached the steady state and run the simulation again yeah it reached the steady state here it says here 42.7 for my model this is the expectation for my model and from my anti spice model it says about the same okay so here we have 43 0.2 and here we have uh, 42.7 okay so they are very close as well to each other and remember the scale on the right for my uh, a junction temperature for my model and the left scale is for my uh, estimated one and just I forgot to change the heatsink from copper to aluminium because it's it should be aluminium one so I will right click on this one and from the cover here right click again and you will see a drop in list here and select aluminium okay I think that the results will not be uh, actually changing so let's run again yeah quite the same okay so we uh, the, the aluminium and cover they are very close to each other in my example here
and just a final test if I decrease this one to be 5 and that one also to be 5 I just want to see if they are still uh, doing the same job and I think yeah this one is about 31.2 for my model and this one is about 32.2 for my uh, for my uh, LT spice model okay so I think they are very close and maybe the small differences because of the area that uh, that 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 we considered here or for the other things considered for the um, for the heatsink model but it's very close enough so i think that's it for uh, the thermal calculation using lt spice and again our model just estimates the final value that's why we can't see the transient here but for the lt spice model inside the mosfet model it 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 estimates also it calculates for you the the uh, the transient which we don't care for this module okay so that's it for this um, a part and thank you very much